things in my book. Also, if you uh, if you look at my article, Craft Detection 101, mm -hmm. I have a number of resources in that article and links uh, for, for tools that you can use. Craft Detection so, 101. There, there are a lot of tools that are available. You just need to become aware of them. But right. the most important is the attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, so the journalists use a, uh, a method they call triangulation. Ah, yeah. Look for three independent sources to corroborate something. Okay. Uh, before you pass it along. So a lot of breaking news, um, you find out about it on Twitter before any other source. Hmm. But sometimes it's wrong. Right, right. So before you pass that information along, see if you can corroborate it from, from two other sources. There have been some examples of that, haven't there, uh, where some, some idea, some news story broke on Twitter and it got spread like wildfire before people realized it was wrong? Oh, there have been several big ones. Right. Uh, one that comes to mind immediately is when there's an earthquake in Haiti. Uh -huh. there, there was a information on Twitter that if you text it to a certain number, mm -hmm. it would contribute funds to sending... Um, nurses and doctors to Haiti. <laughs> it, it turned out to be the number for the Haitian embassy in uh, a consulate in New York. Not only was it bogus, it kind of, it, it, it hampered uh, effort. So that information and, um, you know, the recent Russian uh, protests, apparently they used uh, botnets. You know what botnets are? Uh, no, I know, but I forget. What, what are botnets again? Well, you know, they use uh, viruses. Um, and, and worms to, right. to enlist people's computers without them knowing. Mm -hmm. And they send a command to that computer. And then, okay. So they use botnets to flood Twitter with false information mm -hmm. uh, to try to prevent people from organizing these protests. Mm. I think you'll see that more and more in these political movements like Occupy Wall Street or the, the events that we saw in, in Egypt and, the, and North Africa and the Middle East we're seeing in Russia. Now that the authorities are, are beginning to use ways of, of flooding channels with bad information. The, the Iranian government used that in uh, June uh, 2010 when the, or 2009 when the protests about the election happened there. So mm -hmm. sophisticated misinformation. I'm trying to get full screen here. Is that the right button? Oh, there you go. Thank you. I, I have to rely on Travis for everything. I don't know why I didn't, I didn't know how to do that, Travis. <laughs> okay. So, no, that's, that's fantastic, and thank you for all of those resources and examples. The other, the other ma ma one of your really cool ideas that I wanted to ask you about was also from that same article where you talked about how you, um, you have the students close their eyes and then meditate, or what, not really meditate, you just say, close your eyes and let's see what you think about for two minutes. Right, and, and you want people to become mindful of attention. I would love okay, for you so, go um, ahead and elaborate on that. That'd be great. Well, you know, I, the, the proximate cause for this is laptops open in the classroom. Right, so, and this is relevant to all of you. <laughs> if they're not, if they're, if they're not, if they're not sufficiently interesting, then their students are going to be off on Facebook or World of Warcraft or, or doing their email. You have to comp compete with the entire internet. Right, but. The, the issue really is, do you know where you are putting your attention right. at, at the moment? So with, with my students, I, I, I try to start out by asking them to, to shut their laptops and turn their phones off and close their eyes for one minute. I time out one minute and I say, just notice what goes through your mind. Right. I don't know whether anybody uh, in your class has ever done this. It's amazing that, that most people get through most of their lives without actually noticing that thoughts come up without your, your, your uh, doing it. it they, they, they happen all by themselves. Mm -hmm. So the, the purpose of the exercise mm -hmm. is to begin to establish a little awareness of where you're putting your attention. So, you know what, if, if, if you want to look at it that way, it's, you can think of it as mindfulness. That's a, a word that's associated with meditation. Right. Um, but if you want to be a little bit more scientific about it, you could use the word metacognition. In fact, there's a really good Wikipedia entry about metacognition, which is simply a matter of know, knowing what you're thinking. 
Right. So we think, but we don't really, we're not really aware of what we're thinking. We're not mm -hmm. really conscious of how we're deploying our attention. It's not just the laptop in the classroom. It's, you know, uh, texting while driving. How yeah. many of you have had that frightening well, experience? Let me, let, me, let me pause to ask that. How many people here have texted while driving? Be honest, you're all under arrest. No. So, like, all of them put up their hands. Yeah, so. I don't even have tactics. No, you have not done that. No. So, I think you're risking, the point you're making, Howard, if I'm not mistaken, is that you're basically risking your life while you're doing that, right? Yeah, and other people's lives. Thousands right. of people actually die from that. I, I have the statistics in, in my book, but it's, it's surprising the, the, the number of people, because, you know, um, there's a, a fatal automobile accident, they find a, a, a smartphone. In the wreckage, they can they can look and see when the when was the last text message. So, you know, it's it, and it's maybe not yeah, uh, not always situations that serious. It's uh, you're talking to someone and they're on their BlackBerry or they're looking at their iPhone. Right. Uh, Linda Stone calls this continuous partial attention. Right. That's another great These are great all term. just issues of um, how we deploy our, our attention and how we're aware of how we deploy. Our attention and different people have different priorities, but I think the issue is to s start thinking about it. Well, the wh where do you? Because I've actually, in some of the experts that we've interviewed, we talked to Mimi Ito, we talked to Donna Alverman, we talked to James G, and I asked them. Most of them, I asked kind of a similar question, and I asked them what they think about that uh, idea that, you know, the Sherry Turkle idea that we're alone together, you know, um, and. And it seems there's two parts of a dialectic. On the one hand, there's like Eric Schmidt who said that nobody uh, ever looks at him in a meeting anymore. And so you have these high-level, brilliant Google engineers who are on their laptops while he's talking and they're never looking at him. But he is, he's suggesting that that's because they're so smart that they're switching and that they're taking in both at once. But then the alternative argument, like the Mark Barline, dumbest generation argument, right, is that they're not really paying attention to anything or the Nicholas Carr, the shallows argument, which is that we're basically getting dumber as a result of continuous partial attention. And so I'm wondering, where do you, where do you, where do you find yourself on that, or, or can you comment on that dialectic? Well, I, I believe that social media afford and enable distraction. I'm also aware of the, the, the research that shows that, that most people the overwhelming majority of people aren't really able to multitask, even though they think they are. That if you if you if you test it, right, they are actually uh, losing effectiveness at each of the tasks that they're they're trying to do. Now, there there's in these uh, experiments, there's always a remnant of people who are able to multitask, and I would I would cite the case of the jet fi fighter pilot mm -hmm. who has to navigate, aviate, and communicate simultaneously while trying to shoot the other guy and not get shot down themselves. Right. So some people can do it effectively. Mm -hmm. The question is, and, and there's not really any empirical evidence on this yet, are these people who are just born able to do it the way some people can, can run faster than others? Mm -hmm. Or do they learn how to do it? Can we learn to more effectively multitask. Uh, I think um, whether or not you can effectively multitask, and, and again, I would repeat, mo the research shows that almost all people who think they are effectively multitasking actually are not. Right. Um, whether or not you can, I believe that you can improve your ability to pay attention while you're online by working on it. Right. With the experience of meditators for thousands of years mm -hmm. and research by neuroscientists, cognitive scientists more recently, shows that the brain is somewhat plastic, that right. we can train it, mm -hmm. that we can train our attention. So between Nicholas Carr and Sherry Turkle, I would say, what if we try to learn how to use our attention more effectively while we are using social media, whether it's a, a smartphone or we are a, at a desktop or a laptop and we've got six windows open. Um, people just do that 
they don't really think about how to do it. They don't really try to train their attention. So that's part of what I get into the book is how do you begin to train your attention? Um, so attention, craft detection, those are really essential skills mm -hmm. that are necessitated by these media that didn't exist 10 or 20 years ago. And 10 or 20 years, uh, in, in 10 or 20 years, we've got 2 billion people on the internet and 6 billion mobile phones. So this is just a very sudden deployment, of very powerful technologies that attract our attention. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time for us to begin learning how to use them more effectively. How, what would the, um, the death rate on the highways be if people didn't have driver's licenses or, or any kind of driver's training? You know, would you conclude that people can't drive? Right. I would say yes, people can't drive if they're not taught how to drive. They don't learn how to drive. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing true with the media.